As far as I know, Redix UI, the UI library I'm going to introduce to you in this video, recently got acquired by a company and then in turn they stopped their marketing efforts, resulting in not a lot of people knowing about Redix UI. And that's a shame because it has served me super well in my freelance projects, in production open source projects that I did. And it's overall a really great library that comes totally unopinionated in terms of styling. Meaning it allows you to implement your completely own design system. You don't need to override styles. You don't need a context provider, which is especially useful in Next.js 13. And it has a lot of great advantages. In this video, you're going to get used to Redix UI by building a component together with me. It's kind of like the hello world of Redix UI. We're going to build a super simple popover component together, and it's going to be really exciting. I hope Redix serves you as well as it did me. And now let's get started in building this Redix component together. What Redix UI does for you is it gives you the building blocks that you need for your application. You can imagine them like Lego bricks that you stack on top of each other, only importing and installing whatever you need for your application, making your final bundle size way smaller as compared to something like Material UI. And I much prefer this approach. You don't need to provide any context. If you style them, you don't need to overwrite anything else because they are unstyled by default. Now you can obviously go with some styles that they have done in their documentation, but this is totally unopinionated when it comes to styling, a very clean approach that I really enjoy. Also, you don't need to worry about accessibility. Now that goes for most UI libraries. Redix is not special in that sense, but it does adhere to all the area standards, which means if I press tab, it will take me to the next input field. And then if I press shift and tab, it takes me to the previous one and always pressing escape will close the dialog. Now, if you want to have more information on these area standards, accessibility standards, so you can make your app accessible to everyone, visually impaired people, people navigating with a keyboard, you can read up on them. I'm going to put a link in the description to the official area dialog model. However, you don't need to worry about that. It's already done by Redix UI for you. Now to get started with Redix UI and experience why I really enjoy this approach and have used it in previous freelance projects, in my open source projects, let's actually build a Redix component together. I think that's going to be the coolest approach to learn to use it yourself. Now to get started with Redix, we install the component that we want to create. As I said earlier, each component is a separate package, which allows it to be super modular. The one we're going to use is the at radix UI slash and then react hyphen pop over. And that needs to be yarn add. So we're going to say yarn add and then at radix UI react pop over. That's going to install this particular component and all its primitives for us. Now primitives, when you're working with Redix, is a special term describing these Lego bricks that Redix gives you that you can then use in your application. Now, in our app, there is no need to worry about any context provider whatsoever. They are unstyled, so in Next.js 13, in case of a server component, we can literally just start building. That is super convenient. We can import everything as pop over from and then add Redix UI slash react popover. So now we have access to everything that is contained in this package. It's pretty lightweight and we can use it in our app right away. We can replace the main div and we're going to replace this by the popover dot. And then we can see there's a bunch of properties we have on this popover that we can use to create our components. There's a trigger, a root, a portal and a bunch of other stuff. Now what we need right now is the root. If you're wondering why exactly the root, read up on the Redix UI documentation. It's super well written. It's definitely up there as one of my favorite documentations. This is what we're going to be building. This little pop over a simplified version of that. It's fully customizable. You can see a lot of the features on the Redix page. And you can also see right here under the API reference why exactly we're doing what we're doing. The root contains all the parts. And then you can see the types of props you can pass. It's super integrated with TypeScript, which I really enjoy. The trigger, the anchor, and we'll take a look at each one of them while we need them right now. So let's go back. And then inside of the pop over root, we are going to initialize our trigger because the pop over <laughs> and GitHub Copilot is already uh, spoiling us here because the pop over is going to be opened by pressing a button. So we're going to say pop over and then dot trigger. And this can say whatever we want. So let's say open pop over. Super simple. 
Let's save that and start up the development server. And let's visit that development server of Next.js 13 right here in our browser. Let's go to localhost 3000 and see what this little pop over look. And that didn't work because we need to put this inside of a client component. So a little best practice that I'd like to show you is we're gonna take this component and move it into our components. And then let's create a new file called popover. .tsx. This could also go into a UI folder because it's going to be a very reusable UI component. However, I'm not going to worry too much about reusability right now, just so I can show you the main benefit of Redux UI and not get too caught up in architecture of this particular application. If you want to see how proper clean architecture looks like, I've done a open source image generator that I'm going to link in the description and you can take a closer look at that. Let's call this Radix popovers so we don't have a naming conflict right here. And then replace our popovers with the Radix popover. And that's all we need to do. Now let's declare this as a client component because this Radix primitive does need a use effect, meaning we can't do it on the server. If you're in React, that's going to be client by default. You don't need to worry about that. And then we can render the popover right in our page. Now let's see if this works. The error is gone. If we click the open popover, nothing happens just yet because we're still missing one or two more steps. And there really is not a lot that is missing. So we can say pop or radix popover and then dot portal. The reason we are creating a portal is that we want to move all the content that is inside this popover to the document body instead of being rendered with the other HTML so it doesn't get any styling conflicts, any layout shifts in the popover. And then in here we can say pop or radix popover, I guess, dot content. And this is the content we want to show while the popover is open. So we can just say hello world inside of here. Save that. Go back over to our development server here on the left hand side. Refresh. And if I click open popover, this opened. If I click close, it closes. That is the beauty of Redix UI right here. Not literally, because this is really ugly, I know, but it gives you all the building blocks and I pressed tab and this is focused right away. Now to demonstrate the keyboard accessibility, let's try something else. Instead of the hello world, let's put a div in here with a class name of flex, flex column and then gap of two, just to apply a little bit of styling so it's a bit easier to see. And then let's put two buttons in here, one saying, you know, change option one and the second button saying change option two. Let's format this, save it, and take a look at what this looks like in our server or our application, I guess. It's not just a server. We can open the popover and then navigate using tab, shift, tab, and close this popover using escape. We can also focus this with the arrow keys, the first option after we press it. If I press the arrow key, it's focused and all the keyboard accessibility features that we talked about at the beginning of the video, this area pattern that I introduced to you, are fulfilled with Radix. You don't need to worry about that. And all you need to worry about is building a great UI system or styling system for your application. And that's it. Those are the reasons I like Radix. Great documentation, super extensible. They provide the examples in regular CSS with stitches, even though I have no idea what that is. And then also Tailwind CSS, I guess if you like this channel, then chances are you have heard of Tailwind CSS before. They give you installation. They can, you can copy paste their code that has styling in it. It's great. It's really, really good. Not sponsored, by the way. I just, I, I like their system. I think it's great. You can focus on the more important part and already have the accessibility all done for you. That's all I want to share. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And let me know your thoughts down below. If you like or prefer other UI systems, I'd be interested in hearing that. And I think my lighting is already giving out. So that's going to be it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one and bye bye.